one question that I get a lot is about actual costing in the material ledger. So Janet, can you give us um, some information on the key change in Esperhana related to actual costing and the material ledger? What is mandatory here? I mean, first things first, material ledger is mandatory in the sense that your material valuation will always be in multiple currencies now, but actual costing is very much still optional. One thing to determine there is, you know, are you the sort of customer that actually needs actual costing? So there's industries where it's very common. So the food industry, the chemical industry, anywhere where you've got volatile material prices or volatile processes, actual costing makes a lot of sense. And then there's countries here like Brazil and Turkey, where it's pretty much de rigueur to always use actual costing because you have a legal requirement to drain all your costs through inventory to assign everything into inventory. Whereas in Europe and the US, it's more a kind of business decision whether you want to go that way or not. One of the things I think it's important to take away for s is though the fear of performance. If you think what an actual costing has to do, it looks through every single purchase order, every single goods receipt, every single invoice receipt, and then tries to assign all those differences throughout whatever's happened in production in the course of the period, which is some pretty heavy lifting from a technological point of view. And what we did in 1610, so six, seven years ago now, is we completely re-architected actual costing. So any fears you might have about performance should now be going away. It is much, much faster than it used to be. And of course, it's very hard to give me figures without knowing your exact system constellation. But the kind of myths around actual costing, that it's cumbersome and so on, take some of that away. Of course, the usual challenges of a controller, you know, good data in will give you good data out. They still apply. Actual costing can't improve your processes. It can merely show you what you're writing down and then give you the basis to act on that information. And if I'm using actual costing, do I need to run variance analysis? You should run variance analysis in addition. So they're actually two, two different things. So production variance analysis is all about looking at individual production orders, looking at, you know, did you have scrap? That was thing, were things behaving as you expected? Did you have to switch out a component? Did you, have, did you use more or less of an individual component or an individual activity? Whereas what actual costing is doing is, is working at a more aggregated level. It's not going production order by production order. It's taking all the purchase price variances for a particular raw material. And then it's trying to look where that raw material was used in the period and passing on those follow-on costs to any of your semi-finished goods, any working process, any finished goods, and finally to your cost of goods sold. So it's working at a different level of aggregation. So your actual costing will tell you as a whole was your production plan successful? Whereas the variance analysis that John and I are talking about specifically in the book will tell you were you successful for an individual production order? You know, how did your real scrap relate to your plan scrap, for example? 